does God know what he's talking about, really? What do I do when I face a tension around choices and what my culture is telling me to do, my friend group is telling me to do, and what I think God is telling me to do? How do you know if culture is shaping you more or if you're shaping culture more? In this video, I'm going to share a tool with you which will help you reliably and repeatedly discern what does it look like to apply biblical authority in a cultural situation. Hey everyone, Jonathan Morrow here where I help you understand culture and live out a biblical worldview. If you're finding these videos helpful, I encourage you to like and subscribe and share these with a friend. That really helps me spread the word and I'd really appreciate it. Does God know what he's talking about? I mean, really, does he actually know what he's talking about? That's a big question because when we face tension from culture and scripture, what do we do with that? How do we know when to bend to culture and what people see as normal or how to live out a different principle in that situation? In this video, I'm going to give you some very specific principles and training to help you know how to do just that. But the first thing that we need to understand and talk about is that the question of authority and the topic of authority has come on hard times in our culture. People are skeptical of authority, sometimes with good reason, but also that's crept into the church. And so now you have this whole generation, this whole culture that is skeptical when it comes to authority, and they've made themselves the ultimate authority. What I feel determines what's real, what I think is true is what's true, and I'm the ultimate and highest authority. And that's the cultural context in which we live. So the first thing you need to understand is that people are skeptical of authority, and that's affecting how Christians are trying to navigate culture by applying biblical authority to those situations. The second thing you need to understand, though, is what culture is. And remember, culture is what you come to see as normal without having to think about it. Good things can be seen as normal, and bad things can be seen as normal. The problem is it just seems normal until you pause and stop and reflect to think about it, and if you have a standard outside of that to evaluate it by. And that's what the Bible claims to be. So for the follower of Jesus, you need to understand that there are certain things that will seem normal to you that are good. And there's also things that will seem normal to you that are not good and not consistent with God's good design and commands and character. And part of that is learning how to discern the difference and apply the Bible in our cultural context. Because remember, our marching orders as disciples is what the Apostle Paul describes in the book of Romans. Do not conform to the pattern of this world or what everyone around us sees as normal, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that's what we're all after, right? God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. So how do we test and how do we evaluate? That's what I'm going to unpack in this video together and give you some very simple words and framework and questions to ask to know if you're being more shaped by culture than shaping culture. And as a disciple of Jesus, that's a really important thing to discover about ourselves and also as we make disciples. So in light of that, there's two big questions we need to ask. And the first is simply this, what does it look like to live out biblical authority as a disciple of Jesus? Because that's at the heart of it. So what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? And the second question that we need to ask is simply this. How do we recenter the Bible in our discipleship of others? In this skeptical culture in which we live, how do we put the Bible back in the place of authority as God's word where it needs to be in order for us to live confidently and flourish as a follower of Jesus in a confused culture when there's so many competing voices and all these different ideas, everything is kind of converging. How do we know which way is up, which way is down, what's good, what's evil, what's not good? How do we not pursue those things? Why I should or shouldn't be feeling this tension? And those are important questions that a disciple of Jesus needs to ask. So in light of that, I want to give us a grid or a tool. And you can take a simple sheet of paper. I call these grids for growth. And this is what I call the biblical authority grid. Now, what's beautiful about this is you can take this, you can reflect on it, you can fill it out whenever you face a particular question where you're trying to discern, okay, what does God want me to do and maybe why am I feeling this tension, okay? So here's the grid and how we can begin to apply this and also teach others how to do the same. First, all right, we start with the Bible. First word is Bible, all right? And the first question is, what does the biblical text actually say? That's where we must start the discussion if we want to be 
a follower of Jesus because Jesus took the authority of Scripture seriously, and as followers of Jesus who want to be fully trained to be like him, we take the authority of Scripture seriously as well. So we must start with what does the biblical text actually say, what is the principle, and what is the truth that we need to understand here. And as the reader of the text, we're after the meaning of the author in this text. So what does the Bible actually say about this topic that we're thinking about? Whether it's work, or money, or sexuality, or gender, or marriage, any host of a number of questions that the Bible deals with, we want to understand what does the biblical text actually say. Take the time to write that down when you're considering the first thing. And second, that moves us on to our second word. So the first word is Bible, the second word is culture, and the question that we want to ask here is simply this. What does our culture see as normal about this topic, issue, or question. What is normal? What does everybody do or say about this when I look at my phone and I scroll social media? What are the assumptions that are just presented as normal to me on a day in and day out basis? And so that's what I want to know. So if I'm taking the topic of money, then I would go, okay, what does the Bible say about money? And then I go, okay, if I looked around and I looked at commercials and social media, and I looked at what money is talked about and how money is talked about in those ways by our culture and what's normal, well, debt is normal, spending more than you have is normal, all of those things. We put those in that box. And so we would see what the dominant view is of culture alongside what the dominant view is of Scripture. And that just gives us clarity at first. This also helps us because if we see the biblical trajectory going in one direction as normal, and we see the cultural trajectory going in another direction as normal, we just need to be aware of that at the outset. The third word we need to talk about is me, right? I've got Bible, I've got culture, and I've got me, because here's the bottom line. Is there any resistance in my heart to embracing this biblical principle or truth? And if so, why? So what does the Bible say about it? What's the principle or truth? Is that consistent with what we see out in culture as defined as normal and assumed as normal? If there's divergence there, if there's two different ways then what am I feeling? Is there any resistance in me to applying the biblical passage about identity, sexuality, marriage, money, work, evangelism, whatever topic in this moment to whatever that biblical principle is? Is there anything in me that is feeling attention? And this really is an internal obstacle to obedience. We know from Jeremiah 17, 9 that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? We know that we're easily deceived. We know that we're overcoming sin as we're becoming more like Jesus, and that's called sanctification or becoming more holy and conforming the image of Jesus. So there's obstacles in me, perhaps, to what the Bible sees as good and true versus what the culture sees as normal on any given topic. And what I need to know is, okay, what's going on in my own heart? Is there any resistance there to embracing this biblical principle? And if so, why is that? Do my friends accept this? Do the people I want to be accepted by accept this? You know, what's going on in regards to that tension? And that brings us to the final word, which is response. So Bible, culture, me, response. And here is the fundamental question. What would it look like for me to obey and encourage or even champion this biblical truth? Okay, so what would it look like for me to obey and encourage this biblical truth? How do I make this actionable? How do I create a first step and then the next steps that come along after it? Because again, God's word is alive and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching and correction and training in righteousness, so the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if it's doing those things in me, then what am I going to do with it? How do I champion maybe a countercultural perspective, maybe on sexuality or gender or money or marriage or work or generosity or whatever the topic is? How do I champion something in that regard, what does it look like for me to obey that personally and then encourage and apply that in my sphere of influence, the people around me, the culture that I'm responsible for in terms of shaping and embodying what God has called me to do as a disciple of Jesus? Because at the end of the day, I want the thoughts and worldview of Jesus to be my thoughts in my worldview, and I want to apply those things in everyday life amidst the cultural tensions regardless of what those are, in alignment with Jesus and God's word and scripture, and not what our culture says is normal and good and true, but what is actually good and true. Because here's the bottom line. As a follower of Jesus, does God know what he's talking about? We think yes, but do we live that way? Because when there's tension between what I see in the biblical text and what my culture is saying is good and normal, 
what am I going to do in regards to that? So what does the Bible say? And then what the heart of the question really becomes is this, simply this, will I obey? Do I think that Jesus knows what he's talking about? Do I think that God knows what he's talking about? Because ultimately, obedience is the issue. Obedience is how we grow and faithfulness and living a countercultural, Christ-centered life is the goal. We don't want to be countercultural just to be countercultural. We want to go, where is that tension between what the Bible says is true versus what culture says is good? And then where do I need to see appropriate divergence or distinction or even a different trajectory in my own life, in my family, um, in my school, my sports team, my Bible study, you know, whatever that looks like, my workplace, what would it look like for me to embody a biblical principle there? Why do I face those tensions and what am I going to do about it? So Bible, what does the Bible and the biblical text actually say? Culture, what does culture see as normal? And then me, what's going on in me in regards to this? And then what's my response going to be in light of that? How can I apply and encourage and even champion this biblical truth? And that's what faithfulness looks like in terms of applying biblical authority as a disciple of Jesus in today's culture. Now, it's not easy, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to do that, but at the end of the day, you and I must answer the fundamental question, what does the biblical text say, and will I obey? And we'll see you in the next video.